Hey, what's up guys? You know what it is. It's JC with Wrong and Strong. And we're talking about pretty much the Mexican prisons I was in when I did time in Mexico. I was actually in San Luis Potosí the longest. Then from there I got transferred to Saltillo. Then Topo Chico, Monterrey. Then Juarez. And then I got jumped over to Latuna. I flew into the Islas Marias for a meeting. But we're going to talk about San Luis Potosí in this video. Let's get into this. Drugs money, mansions, and private jets. A myth is being created around the narco culture. Narco culture has gone mainstream and can be seen in various areas like music, religion, soap operas, fashion, and language. But it's not all the pretty roses people like to see. Join me as I tell you the truth behind cartel life. This is narco culture. Hey, what's up? My name is JC. I am Wrong and Strong. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe. Thumbs up, thumbs down, leave a message. Hit the bell so you don't miss nothing. If you're part of my crew, mi familia, mi raza, you guys already know. Subanse la suburban. We're taking a ride to San Luis Potosí. So let me start this off by first saying that San Luis Potosí is a very, very beautiful, beautiful city. Food, people everything i been through that city so many times and i gotta say that the people the culture even just the way that a lot of those i guess you could say gangsters or you know pandilleros like they call them over there they get tatted up they they, they do everything like we do in america you know what i mean but the way that they dance <laughs> Toda la banda loca, puro malandro, el pavo de los cabros, y para el pinche greñudo este, falta grifa loco, sobre yona, sobre yona, sobre loco. And I, I got to experience this in prison when I was there at the Cerezo in San Luis Potosí. They danced to those Colombian cumbias. It was like, it was almost like art. The way they danced and moved and just everything with the girls. It was very, very like badass. And I, I have to say that and put it out there because every city and every town has your own, you know, culture. Just everything, from the music, to the graffiti, to the tattoos, I mean, you name it. Just like California and LA has their own shit, Chicago, New York, Miami, you name it. And that's what's beautiful about, I, I you know, I'm not going to say beautiful about doing time in other, in other countries and other cities, but it's one of the things that I got to experience while I was there for those four years. So I was at the Cerezo in San Luis Potosí that today... They turned it into it, uh, an art museum now. They've actually cleaned it up and completely made it to, it's day and night. They've turned it into a museum. And it's pretty badass because I'm going to go, I will go to visit soon, very, very soon. And pretty much just share my story from when I was there because I was watching a couple of videos today and the way that they turned in, the soccer field into like this place where you have parties now, weddings, um, the cell where Francisco Madero, Francisco Madero was in this prison in 1946. He was there for a month for the El Amor a la Libertad. That's what they put in the cell. They actually did a statue in his name and everything in the cell that he was. So it's pretty badass. This, this castle prison has a lot of history, a lot of culture. And me being there and now researching the amount of history and, and culture that it has, it actually, it's gonna sound a little crazy, but it actually made me pretty proud of being part of that history and being there for those four years. 
Might sound crazy, but it is what it is. Like, at least I got to experience something that's always going to be in history now. Now let's get into my video. <laughs> so, when I was there, you know, there's eight units. There was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, a lot of the Maicerones lived at, a lot. Also in three. Two was the poor one where I talked about, you know, uh, uh, at the beginning, at the first video that I had yesterday. Unidad B was another poor one where they had all the gangbangers that would get in trouble in the big, big prison. So when you walked in, there was this big black gate. You turned to the right, the woman's prison was there, and then Unidad A was on this side where you were, if you were new, that's where they sent you first before they moved you into the big, into the big units. Then the uh, doctor was a turn of the corner. And I'm gonna actually draw a map in these uh, later videos pretty much describing the whole prison as I get video and footage of this place. Cause it's completely redone now. You know, there's, there's memories that I have from that place. Like when all the vegetables and, and everything would get there, you know, twice a week, they would call it on the microphone, La Banda del Carro Rojo, La Banda del Carro Rojo. And, and all the workers would go out there and grab the, the vegetables and everything, bring it in for all the cooks. Like I said, they fed us three times there. In the morning, it was oatmeal with bolillo or sweet bread. Lunchtime, it was tortillas with rice and beans and maybe some slop. And at night, again, oatmeal and bolillo and uh, 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 sweet bread. This is why I tell people that, you know, Mexico is prison. Prison. It's hard. There's a lot of violence. There's a lot of drugs. There's a lot of money. There's a lot of stuff going on that American prisons don't have. American prisons, straight up, are five-star hotels unless, unless you are at a USP. If you are at a USP, then we're talking about a lot of violence, a lot, just a lot of crazy shit happening. Honestly, I would rather be in Mexico than being a USP in the United States. I'm just going to put it like that. But me being American in a Mexican prison was very, very... It's crazy because you're racist against your own people. They, they look at you as a traitor because you're an American. There were seven Americans there at the time when I was there. My baby's mom being one of them. And the woman's prison was inside the men's prison. On Thursdays and Sundays were visiting days from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. I would go pick up Maria, that was my baby's mom's name, and I would take her out on a visit and take her into my cell, into the unit. You gotta understand, on these two days, the whole prison would change. You know, it might be chaos on all the other days. Chaos, I'm talking about people getting stabbed, beat up, uh, uh, people hanging themselves because they had so much time or, or just, you know, really bad on drugs, everything. But once those days came, those days were respected to the fullest. You did not look at another man's wife, daughter, nothing. There was a lot, a lot of respect on those days. But on those days, the whole prison changed, like I'm saying. On those days is when you felt a little bit of hope because there was music playing, all the stores and vendors were open. Um, you know, your family, your family walks into the prison and it changes everything. You go in, if you want to go into your cell and have sex with your girl all day, that's what you do. You order food to your cell. This is how my, my second born daughter was actually made in the Mexican prison. She was lucky enough to be born in California because when she was getting ready to, you know, to give birth, she was actually extradited by the American consul and ended up in California. And that's where my daughter was born. And then my parents went and picked up my daughter and took her, you know, to Chicago. But it was nonstop party time on those two days. And then sometimes, I mean, I'm not going to lie. While I was in prison in Mexico is when I did the most drugs I've ever done in my whole life. 
There was times where we went for weeks, weeks at a time, where actually I would go and hide somewhere at a different unit so the guys that I was, because when I first got there, I was with all the guys that had a lot of money. So they would party for days, weeks. They would bring in, they, they would just slap the whole mattress on the dish, warm it up, and just all night long. I had never did so much blow in my life. And they would have the music playing. I mean, some of the best parties actually that I've been to were in the prison. They were hired the whole mariachi. When Donato got married, he hired a whole banquet service. They all came in, put in the, the chairs, the food, everything. We had live music. We had botellas de presidente. It was a nonstop party. And actually that week, I ended up having to go into the emergency room for alcohol poisoning because I had partied that whole week straight and just got sick, sick. But they don't, they don't, they're starting to show it more on TV now, more on like shows and stuff like that. But there's guns in there, there's drugs, there's, you know, prostitutes. There's, there's everything you could possibly think of because in Mexico, obviously it's a whole different world. It's not the United States, but one thing that I do give them credit on is that they don't try to take your family away from you. Your wife still comes and sees you. You have sex with her. You know, you have babies, blah, 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 blah. But they don't try to take that away from you. And actually, a lot of those families stay together while these guys do 10, 15 years. Because the wives get to see you, get to have conjugal visits. Your kids get to be with you, like touching you and all that stuff. But it also, is, it's like a double-edged sword. You know, a lot of stuff gets brought in. This is why there's guns in there. This is why there's a lot of drugs in there. This is why there's a lot of stuff that, you know, shouldn't be in there. But if I honestly had to pick where to do time, honestly, and... It was, you know, let's just say a 10 year bid. It depends on what you want. You want to have fun, party, make the time go fast because those four years that I did there, I'm not going to lie. I didn't even feel them go by. They just, one day just went by. Mexico is a place to be. But if you want to go in and actually leave a better man that means educating yourself doing something better getting like diplomas a job you know learning a a, a trade then american prison is where you want to be and this is why I, I tell people we have to tell these stories not to glorify the life not to glorify the whole prison thing or you trying to be tough or none of that stuff is to actually give you an insight on if you made the mistake and you're going to prison and it's already too late. You're going to prison. Okay then, go in and do what you have to do. Get your GED, get some college credits, learn how to type. I took every kind, I'm gonna sit down one day and I'm gonna show a video of every diploma that I got in there, every diploma. And I'd say I got about over 25 because once I came to realize that I was actually not dumb, that I was actually kind of smart, I started wanting to learn everything. I wanted to learn how to type. I got my GED. I got some college courses. I started reading book after book after book. And then when I got into fitness, I got my personal train certification and I got my sports nutrition certification where I could actually design diets for people depending on what their goals and intentions are. When I got out, I was actually ready to get a job. Was it hard? Yeah, it was hard, but I was ahead of the game. A lot of guys come out and then they want to play catch up and it doesn't work like that. So my thing is this, yes, Mexican prison is hard. It is violent. There is a lot of drugs, but you get, to, you get to keep your family, you get to see your kids, you get to hold them, you get to, you know, there's, there's a, a side to every side. 
In American prisons, you don't. You don't get to hold your kids. You don't get to have sex with your wife. You don't, you don't get to do a lot of stuff, but you get to better yourself. So, I don't know. You know, it's up to you. <laughs> now, I have a story to end this with. So while I was in prison in San Luis Potosí, every so often, all the drug lords would get bored. Because all the drug lords in there used to like to spend money. If they weren't sponsoring a soccer team, because soccer was huge in there, to the point where people get stabbed and beat up, they were doing something else. So they started getting into paying guys to race. And I'm pretty fast. Believe it or not, I'm a pretty fast sprinter. So they would pay me to race all these guys. And they would actually sit out there and bet like they were betting on horses. And it was a lot of money. They used to pay me a quarter ounce if I won. <laughs> and you know damn well I would win. So, you know, I remember this time, you know, I was undefeated. I had raced about 10 times. Tall guys, short guys, you name it. I was undefeated. So they brought this guy in from Michoacan that he was from the Sierra. That I guess over there in his rancho, he would chase down like these elks or, or deers, whatever you want to call them, without no shoes and grab them by the tail and wrestle them down. And that's how they hunted over there in his home. <laughs> so I'm not going to lie. When I seen him, you know, roll up his pants and he was going to, you know, race me with no shoes. I got a little worried. I was like, man, this motherfucker's going to get me, and then I ain't going to be able to, you know, this is my days where I was really hooked on that, on that poison I was telling you guys about. So I was like, he's going to mess up my groove, and I ain't going to be able to, to do nothing, because this was every Saturday, you know, at night. So we got ready, you know, we, we got ready, dirt. Boom, I had, they had special shoes they would let me use because I had those big ass boots. They had special shorts that I would wear. And I smoked that motherfucker. Yeah. Catch elks by the tail. <laughs> Have you ever been chased by 10 gang members with a pistol or the cops? He didn't even have a chance. My name's JC. I am Ron Strong. Don't judge nobody. Stay in your lane. I hope you learned something from this video. Hey, I'm just having fun telling you my story. This whole week, it's going to be about me. That's it, point blank. About my time in Mexico, about the times I cried, laughed, my addiction, everything. Because at the end of the day, I do this so people can watch this, learn from my mistakes, and not do the dumbass shit that I did. Alright, I'll catch you guys on the rebound.